Hey everyone, this is Fixed Reef, and today we have yet another Castle A360X in for repair. You know, I have been doing a lot of Castle A360X repairs lately. Many. Late, as of late, they have outnumbered EB832s that have been, I have been repairing. Many of the Castle problems are the same. I already went through uh, issues with the power circuit multiple times in my videos. There are some LED channel related repairs. And so I usually do not record videos of this, and that's why uh, this light is already partially disassembled. So when the light came in, obviously not working, I usually plug it into my lab power supply and see how much current it's consuming when it's turned on. And when I see absolutely no current, it usually means that the power circuit is dead. And if I see a little bit of current, it means that the main controller is running, but there is a problem elsewhere in the circuit. This time around, I plugged it in, and I had absolutely no current consumption whatsoever, so I assumed that it's probably going to be the classic power circuit repair that, um, that I'm going to have to do. And then I opened it up. And when I opened it up, I did my usual set of tests, and that is to see if the 19 volt input comes out at these two test points. And it did. Now that came through as 19, but it has absolutely no current consumption. And that's something that I have not seen before on the slides. So we are going to go ahead and find out where the problem is, repair the problem, and get this light working again today. So just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, let me plug in my lab power supply into this, power it on, and it's currently consuming zero amp uh, power whatsoever. All right, now let me bring up my uh, multimeter. And let's measure voltage at the test points. And it's showing 19 volts. So, so far, so good. Now, however, over on this side where we have all the controllers, I'm expecting something like 3.2, 3.3 volts at the controller power. And there is nothing. There is nothing here. There is nothing here. So when that's the case, it means that the um, it means that the light is not producing the low voltages required to power controllers. So let's keep the ground probe on our ground um, test pin. That's 19 volts. Let's take a look here. We have, we have zero, and we have one volt output. So this area over here is where it's supposed to produce 5 volts, I believe, for the fan and 3.3 volts for the main controller, and it's producing nothing. So let's uh, get under the microscope and find out what's, uh, what kind of controllers we have here, what kind of voltage regulators we have here, and uh, find out what uh, markings are, and uh, perhaps figure out which one's not working. All right, so since I haven't actually been around this circuit, I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, there are two suspicious um, parts here. There is this one, U4, and then there is this one, U1. So I would like to start with probably U1 and see what type of um, component that is. Of course, everything is conformal coded, uh, but we can get to markings. By the looks of it, the markings are YBWA and uh, Everything suggests that this is the Rictac type deal. Looking at the, when I looked up the markings, it suggests a, a USB, a typical USB power switch. So it may not be our, um, our candidate here. Let's switch over to this guy. This is markings 42. 4202 for the U4. Okay, so <clears throat> that 4202 turned out to be a Texas Instruments uh, buck converter, or actually a step-down controller. This guy takes in 19 volts, I believe, on this pin, takes ground on this pin, and on this pin it's supposed to produce whatever voltage you set. That voltage is being set by, um, I believe, R18 and R16, um, and 
and it's supposed to produce in this particular configuration it's supposed to produce five volts and uh, and uh, that's what it is there is also an enable pin and the enable pin is being controlled by these two resistors which is act as a voltage dividing again uh, circuit produces about 3.4 volts which enables this controller so I just tested the enable and the enable is exactly 3.4 volts so this is this um, chip is enabled but it's only producing about one volt output and that is because um, likely this controller is damaged the issue with this um, voltage regulators is that they have unlike a, a typical buck converter that also has an external MOSFET that it switches on and off to produce whatever voltage it wants these ones have the voltage the MOSFETs built in and integrated into the chip those MOSFETs eventually fail and they stop producing proper voltages so this 4202 is likely damaged and will need to uh, have it replaced that is unless of course the issue is with the programming resistors I just tested this uh, which one is it this is R18 and it's measuring something like 200 to 300 kilo ohms in order to produce um, a stable 5 volts out of this we need it at uh, about 13 kilo ohms so I actually suspect that this resistor is faulty and not the controller we have seen this previously on the power uh, circuit controllers on Kessel so I suspect that we have the same exact problem here to verify that's easy to verify I'm just gonna take take this resistor out and measure it I kind of measured it in circuit um, but you know how it is when measuring in circuit all kinds of things can get in the way so it's always good to when double checking especially take it out of the circuit and measure The amount of heat that this board dissipates is crazy. I might need some help from my soldering iron. Okay, that's good enough now it's actually showing 13 about 13 kilo ohm how very interesting so in that case I do suspect that the issue with, is with the controller because all of the other resistors check out perfectly fine but the problem is more than likely with the converter that uh, converts um, 19 volts to about 5 volts here so we'll have to replace it then and the original resistor goes back in place since there's absolutely nothing wrong with it okay so we've determined that the problem with this light is somewhere in this um, converter circuit um, likely not um, any of the configuration resistors but the converter chip itself so I'm gonna try to remove it and replace it with a working one so let's get under the microscope and see if we can get it off all right so <clears throat> as usual with Kessel lights I have to remove the conformal coating before I can access the controller and it's going to be as usual um, a bit complicated especially on components that are this small I don't want to necessarily damage this because this is currently my theory that this is going to be the you know the bad part but I don't want to necessarily damage it taking it off and with Kessel and all of this conformal coating around it damaging is um, very easy to do 
to make my life a little easier, I'm going to mix leaded solder into unleaded solder to add the um, volume of solder and to lower the temperature. It's going to be a bit messy, but that's okay, as we can clean everything up um, once we're done. Okay, and now we can attempt to get it off with some hot air. All right, I think we've succeeded not breaking anything and getting the, the, the piece off. Now let's clean up and um, get rid of all the messy solder. Okay, this looks really, really good. Just need to add some fresh solder. Just like that. This looks good, and now we need to put um, a new controller in. Okay, so to install, I'm actually going to use a donor board component, as I'm waiting for a stock of these controllers to arrive. All right, let's see if we can put it in. Should be much easier now. The conformal coating is not a factor, and and um, the temperature, the melting temperature of leaded solder, is much much lower. Let's use the iron to um, anchor this thing. Something like that. And uh, a bit of cleanup of solder and then cleanup of flux. Okay, now it's installed properly and um, fairly clean. I don't see any bridges.
Except for something over here. What's that? All right, now I'm confident that there is no bridge. Okay. All right, now that we have it all installed and cleaned up, it's time to test and see if that fixed our problem. Our power supply and power. And look at this. The light is working. The fan is spinning. Controls, let's see if controls work. Controls, different channels, it's all working. We have it fixed. Well, let's as always quickly go over what happened here. So this is a, an issue that um, I haven't seen before with uh, castles in general, and this, this light in particular. Uh, upon turning it on with the lab power supply, uh, it was drawing absolutely zero amps of any kind, uh, which usually indicates the power circuit problem. However, 19 volts could be detected on the output of the power circuit, but absolutely no voltage on the main controller or the fan, which is 3.3 and 5 volts respectively. And it turns out the problem it was with a power converter that takes 19 volts and converts it into 5 volts, and then another one converts that into 3.3, but the point is that this is where the problem was. That converter was the issue. And likely, more than likely, the issue with this converter was that, uh, that the MOSFET inside that's built in inside of that little component eventually failed. And that's what was wrong with the light. Well, but otherwise, this completes the repair. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.